Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of Gummin. So today we're going to be doing the spray painting stage on this Mazda CX-7. The name of the color is Galaxy Grey and the paint code is 32S. So this is just a quick look at the job after I'd finished doing the prep work. Here it is in the spray booth. For this job here I won't be including any of the masking or prep work. We'll just be getting straight into the spray painting stage. So the only thing I would like to quickly mention about the prep work is that I did take it one step finer than I usually would have and that's simply because I'm spraying this job here in Stando Blue which is one of Axelta's waterborne systems and I found that you need to just go that little bit finer with your prep work uh, because it's not going to fill this base coat doesn't fill up as much as the solvent based base coat systems that I was previously using so I used to prep my blend panels with 600 a lot of the time and that's mainly just because it's quicker like I can buzz a panel down really quickly with 600 grit especially on the European vehicles with the uh, heavy orange peel um, yeah whereas if I was to use 600 with this paint system, the Stando Blue, I'd probably get some prep scratches showing through the base coat. So yeah, just go. I just go 800 now. I know most people use 800 already anyway, but um, yeah, whatever, whatever floats your boat at the end of the day. Now, I spoke to the paint reps because they had been here for a full week. Um, they actually didn't come in and watch me spray this one, but they were in there for a couple of the other jobs um, leading up to me doing this job here and that was sort of you know giving me a few tips here and there so yeah look i mean i, I followed some of their tips and I, i'm like a, a sponge that's what i told him i said man like because he had a book and he said oh you know you can read through that if you like uh this is at the end of the week actually he, he told he didn't tell me to read through it he said oh the other guy can read through it because he didn't get as much experience um and he goes and i said yeah well that's why i'm like always asking you all these questions man like i'm putting everything that's in that book into my head and whether or not I use it or not, like I'd rather have it there. I'd rather know the way that they want me to use it um, and at least know that I'm not doing it right, you know, not doing it by their recommendations. But yeah, as I say, there's a few things that I will be doing that are a little bit outside of the recommended procedures by Axalta, um, you know, by the distributors and by the manufacturers of this product. And that's cool. As long as I know I'm outside of those limits and as long as I know that they work in myself as well. Like, So I'll actually be doing something on this specific job here that they say that I really shouldn't do. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm spraying down now is the Wet on Wet Primer, AKA Sealer in the US. That's what everyone calls it in the US, Sealer. Um, so yeah, basically this does a couple of things. It's, it seals down some of your prep work, so you can actually finish your prep work off a little bit coarser if you are putting um, some wet on wet primer down. Uh, and also, if you've got any cut throughs, it'll sort of seal it, yeah, it'll seal it down, as they say in the States, you know, it's like a sealer, it, seal, it does seal it down. Um, and it also gives you some coverage. So, you know, you pick the uh, shade of um, wet on wet primer that is gonna be uh, quite close to the top coat color so that you don't have to put um, an extra coat of color on to make sure that you get coverage. So usually, and when possible, I will always try to avoid spraying wet on wet primer on um, masked up panels on the car. So I don't mind spraying it on a bumper bar, on a new panel that is off the car, or, or even any panel that is off the car, even the original panel, I don't mind usually doing that. So when possible, I will avoid doing what I'm doing now um, more so for the overspray, that is one reason. And I also don't like it, let's just say I had to get this um, wet on wet primer up against that um, quarter panel to rear door jam. You can actually end up getting some of the overspray inside there and then the color won't always follow it in and then you can actually get an edge that you can't actually polish out. So sometimes you have to do like a little extra spot in in the door jam. Whereas, yeah, look, sometimes you have to and so be it, you know. So this job here, I had to do it and at the end of the day, it did come out fine. Um, but yeah, as I say, if, if I had to go up to um, door openings or gaps where it can float in, I, I usually would try and avoid it and, and sort of go around the job a different way. Now the next thing, which I was saying before that the paint reps didn't want me to do, and they straight out, like literally minutes before I walked into this spray booth, the sprayer, he said, man, don't do it this way, don't do it this way. And he's like, man, just, yeah, don't, don't do this. So what I'm spraying here is a bit of thinners. That's just universal thinners, base coat thinners, whatever. 
Um, and what that does is melt the edge of the wet on wet primer in. So yeah, that, that just makes it so that I'm not gonna get a halo around the edge of that primer because um, as I was mentioning before, like earlier on in this video, with the waterborne base coat, this system at least, it does seem to sink into all those scratches. Remember I was saying about the prep scratches, it'll sink into them more so than the solvent. It'll also sh uh, sink in to that halo edge around the wet on wet primer. So what I did by spraying that thinners down over the edge, that's actually melted the wet overspray. It's basically just melted that in so it's gonna be nice and smooth. And when I put the base coat over the top, it's just gonna go down really smoothly. I know it does work, I know it can go wrong, but it can only really go wrong, from my experience anyway, it will go wrong if you use a fade out thinner. Now I was actually told years ago, because I actually used to use this system under the name of Promax Pro. I was told years ago by a paint rep, he said, oh, I'll put some fade out thinner. He goes, oh, I didn't tell you that, but you know, give it a shot, basically. Like, he knew that he shouldn't have told me, and I did it, and I was doing it for a, a, probably a good month or so, and then maybe I just didn't let it dry quite long enough. Maybe I put it on too heavy. I went to bake it. So I put the color down, it looked fine. Put the clear down, it looked fine. And I went to bake it, and all the way around the edge where I put that um, fade out thinner, it's, it just came back up. A big halo came through to the final finish. So yes, as I say, as long as you don't use that fade out thinner, and basically that's what I put it down to, because I think what the fade out thinner is, is basically it's got some acrylic or 1K clear in with it um, to, to stop it from drying, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So it works great on your fade outs, on your clear blends, but you really shouldn't do it for um, underneath your base coat color. So all of that aside, we're on to our base coat blender now. So I just leave this in the gun. I don't actually clean this out between jobs. I've just got the PPS pot there and I'll just top that up once it gets empty and yeah, I don't even change it out. So the gun I'm using, it's the same gun I used to use for the 599 when I was spraying solvent. So that's just um, the ANI F160 1.2 mil, and it does a brilliant job. So with that base coat blender, you really don't want to go too heavy with it. Um, you probably notice how it's a funky, weird looking color. It looks all milky and blue. Now it will change color. It'll go clear once it's dry. But yeah, I've found that if you go too heavy with it, it can actually change the finished product. So it can actually sort of stay a very slight uh, milky blue color. So yeah, what I sprayed there is pretty much what you want. You don't want to go much heavier than that. There's no real need for it anyway. And there is actually a slow one. So if it gets really, really hot, you can use a slow base coat blender. And yeah, there's always ways around it. So next up, straight onto the color. And this is one thing I really do enjoy about spraying this, um, this system. The coverage is really good and it's just bang, bang, one and a half coats and you're out of there. So what you might have noticed that I did was I actually did the blends first. So I, I turned that pressure down a little bit on the blends. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any color hitting the adjacent panels, um, which is one thing that I did struggle with a little bit. And, and you know, that's, that's all good. I mean, I'm always learning and I'm, I'm happy to try new things and that's exactly what I'm doing this time. So I've been um, yeah, actually turning the pressure down on my blends, doing my blends first, then cranking the pressure up and doing the faces and it's been working. Now this job here was on the Friday and the paint reps were in there for an entire week just showing us the ropes and helping us make that transition. Now with this job here, he obviously wasn't in there watching me, he wasn't telling me what to do. I didn't want him in there. I'm like, man, can I just do it myself, please? <laughs> and anyway, he walked in as soon as it had finished baking, had a look at the job and he goes, oh, that looks all right. That looks fine, man. Looks really good. And I said, man, you know, and, and you know what? I did this, I did this, and I did this. You know, there's like three or four things that he says you shouldn't do that I did and it worked. And he even said himself, he said, we are in a results game. You know, at the end of the day, you can people can say whatever they like. You can't argue with the results. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, if you're doing good quality work, uh, jobs are coming out clean, colors are looking good, no one's gonna argue with you. Well, they can't, you know? Like, they can, yeah, they can try and talk, but that's just, that's just words, man. Like, get in there and get the work done and let your work sort of speak for itself. So yeah, one of the best things about this Stano Blue is the speed of application. So it, it takes a little bit longer to dry once it's on than some of the other paint systems. But yeah, just you can just get in there, smash the base coat down quickly, 
get out and you can, I don't know, look up the colour for your next car. If, if you are waiting, now it's summer at the moment here in Perth, so it's really not taking that long to dry it. However, I did find that this um, this system, I used to use it, as I was saying before, in uh, Chrome, as, as Chromax Pro, but it is the same system. And yeah, in the middle of winter, that was, uh, was pretty annoying, man. Like a lot of the time, if you were doing a job like this, you just put your base coat down and you'd hit bake for 10 minutes. You know, that's how slow it was. Like um, towards the end of using that, I was really getting over it because uh, we didn't have the best compressor at, at the time. So the boys would be out there using the orbital sanders. I'd want to use my air fed respirator and then you'd want to use your blowers and it was just easier to walk out and hit bake for 10 minutes than you know waiting for like 45 minutes for all that water to dry like the waterborne base coat to dry so we'll see how it goes this time now as i say we are in summer at the moment so drying is um the least of our worries um and yeah as i say we'll see how it sort of pans out over winter if it if it slows us down immensely or anything like that but if it means i've got to do an extra half an hour's overtime at the end of the day to get the job done so be it i'd prefer not to do overtime these days i'd rather get home and relax or get home and make a vid for you guys on youtube but um you know if i'm going to be stuck in in work waiting for base coat waterborne base coat to dry so be it but um yeah towards the end of where i did work like i was actually really getting over it man and spraying stando blue and this is just straight up talk like i know some people like they get so defensive and so in love with the product that they can't handle any and i mean any criticism like i can say i totally love it but and all they hear is the but you know what i mean <laughs> um, but yeah, look, what I was about to say is that using Chromax Pro was one of the contributing factors to me leaving my last job because I had to get there so early in the morning and leave so late at night, the hours that I was doing, I was just over it. It was tiring me out. And coming back here and just starting at 8 and finishing at 4 was just an absolute godsend. I, I really needed it at that time. Um, I've got I, I really do take work seriously and I hate to see you know a couple of jobs not go out that week and I probably put a little bit too much pressure on myself and yeah it just got to the point in that previous shop where I felt like you know if they had have had a different say solvent system in there it would have been easier it would have made my life a lot easier because as I say the amount of time we had to wait just for the base coat to dry just seemed a little bit excessive to me you know and if we if we were using say like the standoff solvent system we would have been able to cut an hour's overtime out each day and that hour's overtime would have just been um you know waiting for base coats to dry pretty much you know and yeah that workshop there did only have one spray booth and it was a low bake booth which was a great booth when the filters were clean but the way that the booth worked it had a full set of filters the entire way through the floor and because the Chromax Pro or Stando Blue fills up the filters really quickly, you'd get like two or three weeks out of the filters and then they'd be full and you'd lose all the airflow in the booth. And as you guys probably know from what I'm doing now is I'm actually flowing air over the panels to get the base coat to dry. So as I was mentioning earlier, the compressor wasn't up to scratch. The booth wasn't flowing enough air through it, you know, and it was, it just all, it like a perfect storm of things all happening at once, and it was just, it just got way too much for me. Um, it's one of those things, if it had been summer, a lot of those issues would have gone, you know? Um, but yeah, as I say, you know, that's like the only real thing that I personally don't like about this system. It dries a little bit slow in the colder months. I know for lots of people that's totally not an issue, and that's fine, but um, yeah. I don't hate the system by any means, I absolutely love it. I was saying to the paint reps, you know, there's probably nothing else I would ever put on my car. Like, if, if I was after quality, you know, and like I, I drive a little crawler these days, I'd happily put solvent on that car, but let's just say like I had um, a, a project that I wanted to do up and, you know, money didn't matter, but quality did. I would definitely be going for something like Stando Blue or Chromax Pro. So yeah, that's me using the air blower just for a couple of minutes. So as I said at the moment, it's been a little bit warmer. So what I'll do these days, or what I've been doing these days anyway, is just giving it a quick blow just for a couple of minutes straight after I finish spraying while I'm still there in the booth. I'll then go out, clean the guns out, 
um, and then by the time I've cleaned the guns out, mixed up the clear, um, got everything ready to go, uh, it's pretty much right to go and I don't need to tack rag the base coat uh, as long as I use that blender over the entire panel or I color the entire panel I, d I find I don't need to tack rag the base coat stage for, um, between base coat and clear coat I just thought I'd give you guys a quick look at the system as well so this is a stando blue system that's the color box we've actually got a couple of color boxes there um, we've got this barcode system so that's really handy you just click on um, the material or the product that you want to mix up and um, off you go straight away without having to stuff around typing things into the computer. So, you know, it's all those little little time savers that it might be, you know, a couple of seconds here, a couple of seconds there. It all adds up, I guess. Yeah, so I just thought I'd uh, give you guys a look at me mixing up my clear. It's something that I don't usually put into my videos. So, I uh, just thought I'd put it there. Now you might also see that little digital screen there um, in front of the computer monitor. So it basically tells you the temperature and the humidity. And the reason we've got that is because when you're spraying that Stando Blue, um, you really have to be careful that it doesn't dry as you're spraying. Now there's a little chart you'll probably see there with the blue, three blue lines. Um, and that'll basically have a, a guideline on to when you should use the fast, medium, or the, the standard, the slow, and the slow with a little bit of water added to it. So the water slows it down even more than the slow um, adjuster does. And yeah, look, that's something that most of you guys probably don't really need to know. However, those of you who do spray this system, just when it does get warmer, don't forget to um, yeah just uh, slow it down a little bit because uh, it's more so on like the lighter metallics and stuff like that. The blends can start to go a little bit mottly and look a little bit funny if uh, they start drying as you're applying. So yeah, if that base coat blender dries also before you get to blend into it, then your blends can look a bit funny as well. So it's something I haven't um, uh, dealt with a great deal because yeah, look, I most of the time I used this stuff was throughout winter, but that's that is something that all the um, paint reps have been telling me now yeah just just to clarify this was my first week spraying this stuff in about three years so yeah I mean it is summer now uh, in here in Australia but um, yeah by the time you guys have seen this video I've probably had heaps more experience so yeah I'm, I'm just making this video and then you guys are probably on like a month or so delay because I like to just put one video up a week just to um, just to make sure that you guys uh, get a regular video on the channel and yeah basically we're doing the clear coat stage now so obviously that doesn't change at all going from um, water or solvent to water um, however it, it's a bit nicer to do like your clear coat definitely goes over this stando blue base coat a lot nicer than it goes over the um, the solvent based base coat so I guess it's partly just due to you not having all these solvents in the base coat to sort of pull the life out of the clear coat um, and it just seems like you're not fighting the orange peel or not a, not real orange peel but the texture I guess of the base coat because it just it dries down so smooth and flat that um, yeah, the Stanox base coat does so as I say like I've, I've got a lot of good things to say about this system um, a, a few things that you know in a, in a perfect world wouldn't be the case but you know, it's one of those things, man, maybe I've got to stop taking workflow so seriously. Like previously, I would take it as a personal insult or like a personal failure. If, if that, let's just say there was 20 cars in the workshop, they were all expected to go out by the end of the week and we only had 16 go out, um, I would I'd beat myself up, you know what I mean? Obviously not physically, but yeah, I'd, I'd take that as a personal insult. Maybe I have to just say, look, I can only do so much the product is what the product is. If it's not drying, well, what do you want me to do, man? You know, maybe I have to start taking my suit off and walking around outside and start prepping another job up, which is something I don't really like to do. You know, once once I've got that spray suit on, the only the next time I want to pull it off is once the job's all finished. Um, because I don't know, you don't, I don't really like getting out there, getting covered in dust, and then going straight back into the spray booth and expecting to get a nice clean job. But yeah, the spray gun I'm using for clear coat here is the Gunman Edition Pro Light. What an absolute beauty. There was only 25 of these things made. And I'd like to say a big thanks to all the 25 of you who did buy them. Um, hopefully in future we'll do a second run. That'll be totally awesome uh, with a different design on it maybe. So um, yeah, so TE20 1.3mm 
full fan, full fluid, and two bar pressure, or maybe just a touch under two bar as the weather does warm up a little bit. As I said before, using the fast hardener, now this job here did have to go the same day as spraying it, so it's, um, it's important to get them nice and clean. Now, I would actually like to get this different clear coat in. They've got one called Standox Performance Clear, that's what it's called, yeah, and it, I used it when they came in to do a bit of a demo, and I tell you what, man, it's amazing. It dries so glossy and really fast. Like, you get a bit of 15-minute bake, it feels like um, this standoff standard clear would the day after, if you know what I mean. So after, you know, the overnight, if you left this clear overnight, it's nice and dry. You're not going to run a great deal of a risk of scratching it but if you're um, sort of handling this standoff standard clear the same day it does stay a little bit gummy um, not too bad like it's, you can still work with it but you, you, the panel beaters do just have to be that little bit more careful with it because it, it, it's a bit uh, softer whereas the uh, this other clear the standoff performance clear man that stuff is amazing it, it yeah as I say it goes, it's rock hard after a 15 20 minute bake as soon as that cools down bang off you go so yeah that's the job I reckon it came up really really well like you'll see in a couple of minutes at the end of this video how many nibs there ended up being in it there was a handful man like five <laughs> five or six or seven or something like that there was another guy um, polishing his job or like when I went out to polish this job there'd, there'd been a guy out there for the previous 20 minutes I went out there, polished mine, and he was still going by the time I left. I was like out there for 10 minutes at best, <laughs> 5 or 10 minutes, denim, bang bang, uh, polish it up, guys were out there washing it within minutes after me finishing my job. So, But yeah, I love pumping the jobs out nice and quick to a good quality standard and getting people back on the road as soon as you can because no one wants to be without their car just because they had an accident. And um, yeah, look, I, I take a lot of pride in my work and I recommend doing the same thing. If you don't take pride in what you're doing, you really need to ask yourself why you're doing it. And yeah, look, at the end of the day, I do see some people in this trade and they're just doing it for a paycheck and it's it's kind of sad it's like man you're, you're in a really good trade you know why don't you um take a bit of pride in what you're doing you know because <laughs> you're just pumping out terrible quality well you're not even pumping it out you're just pushing out terrible quality work that you just don't care about but i guess that's just the way it is you know some people have been broken for whatever reason their spirit's been broken they just they lose the passion maybe they used to have it but then they don't have it anymore so all of that aside i hope you guys have been able to follow me and understand what i've been rambling on about for the last 20 minutes because i am a little bit over caffeinated this sunday afternoon i bought myself a really good coffee machine this weekend and i've had about four cappuccinos and um, yeah, I'm sort of bouncing off the walls, so yeah. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out.